What is up, group? It is Friday, September 22nd. Yeah? Yeah, it's the 22nd. I should know that. I've been looking at numbers all day long. <coughs> on that note, <coughs> on this note, the coughing, I apologize for being a little bit late. I've been sick for the past several days. I had to get the boys fed, and being sick has slowed me down. So I apologize. But to start off, I want to say that I think that everybody that was supposed to receive their fish oil has now received their free fish oil. So if you were um, one person, I think that it was Casey Kendall that still hasn't confirmed, or maybe Casey has. I think I haven't heard from one person to confirm that they received their fish oil, but if you were one of the three and you haven't received your fish oil, please let me know. And again, I apologize if I'm doing the sniffling and everything else while we're doing the Q&A tonight because I'm sick. <coughs> and yeah, oh, there's Casey. Casey says that they got it. Awesome, glad to hear it. I love your profile picture with your little puppy there. I'm leaning in so I can see the picture. And for those of you that haven't been here to a live Q&A before, if it doesn't look like I'm looking right at you or that I'm looking off in some crazy weird direction, it's because I'm looking at your actual comments, so it makes it look like I'm not looking right at you, but I am. Um, <clears throat> Jen says that she got hers as well, so that's good. That's two out of three. Awesome. I think that Sharon is the only one that is in question, but no, 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 no. I think that I did receive an email from Sharon, so I think we're good. And yeah, the fish oil has been delivered. Congratulations again to the winners. When you get to the point where you've been using it for a week or so, I would love for you get at, for you guys to post up a picture, a review, the dog's eating, you know, just something about how did it go? Did it go well? Did it go horribly? You know, don't don't feel the need to make the review positive. If you think it sucked, tell me that it sucked. If you think that it was an awesome fish oil product, tell me it was an awesome fish oil product. I'm not affiliated with them at all. I didn't make any money from sending it to you guys. It was just a supplier sending me some free samples so that I could send them to you guys. And I hope that they work out. So, yeah. I hope they work out. <clears throat> and to our new members that are joining us for the first time here, remember to check out the group course and the pin post. Remember to read the group description. Two new rules were recently added, or guidelines, rules, whatever you want to call them. Stuff to do slash stuff not to do and help us keep this community a positive one. Uh, Jen says, so far so good. Added a tiny bit to each dinner meal the last three days. <clears throat> and I'm sorry guys if it sounds like I'm heaving and <laughs> but yeah it's kind of literally kind of hard to breathe right now so if I have to cut out a little bit early I apologize but I'm going to do my best <clears throat> to hold on for the whole hour and <clears throat> yeah, I'm do my best to get through it. We've had kind of a a rough week as as a group. We've we've had some posts go postal. We've had some longtime members leave the group. It's been quite the uh, quite the interesting week here in Raw Feeding 101 Dash Learn to Feed Raw. And you know, it's periods of growth are always uncomfortable. But I think that as we go through some more of these uncomfortable posts, uh, things that some people just don't necessarily like, I think that we'll refine group rules and group guidelines even more. I never want to be one of those groups that has a mile-long list of guidelines and rules that takes you 45 minutes to read. Not even the admins can remember all the rules and point them out to you. <clears throat> so, that's not what we're going to do. But it has been a crazy week. Tiffany says that she missed it all. Um, <laughs> you didn't miss anything. You didn't miss anything that you wouldn't have necessarily gained a whole lot of information from, I guess, maybe is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> um, yeah. There were some posts that were put up. One of them was a um, butchering post. It wasn't even a video or pictures necessarily 
but it was fairly descriptive, which made some people uncomfortable. So we've added a rule for that. And yeah, so check out the group description. Even if you're a long time member, check out the group description because there were two new rules recently added. Apologies. <clears throat> I'm trying to not die here. Diane Wiles, what are you doing here? I actually have your question written down right here. To, and apparently the boys heard something they didn't like. I, I don't know. I don't know. But I got your question written down right here because I didn't think that you were going to be here today. But we're going we're gonna to ask it anyways. I need to take a drink. Oh, maybe there's a puppy in the yard. Puppy in the yard? Maybe? 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 Nope. Barkin's barking. Wilkins just a crazy dog barking at nothing. I'm sure you guys have no idea what I'm talking about, right? There's always something your dog's barking at. Wilkin! Wilkin! Hello. Don't be crazy. No, no, you're going to knock the camera. No, no, you're going to knock the camera. Sorry. All right, so let's try and dive into this thing. Hello, Ryan. Ryan just showed up, gave us the thumbs. Nice to see you. For those that missed it, Ryan is our new moderator. We have more than 7,000 members, I think. 7.2 thousand members as of today, and we definitely needed another moderator. Ariane and I were talking, Bliss and I were talking, Bliss, Ariane and I were talking, and it was just, okay, we need, we need another moderator, at least one more right now. We're definitely going to need one or two more by the time we hit 10,000. And Ryan's our new moderator. He's already done a great job, already jumped in on a bunch of posts, already made some helpful posts himself, so super excited to have him on board. So let's go into Diane Wiles' question that she asked in the... Um, Q&A reminder post earlier. I believe I got it posted up yesterday. And it was basically that, um, and I hope that I read your question right, so correct me if I'm wrong, but Diane has four dogs, and they're all fed raw, and two of them, for some reason, they all get chicken quarters, so they're all getting their raw meaty bones and these kinds of things, but two of them have some plaque buildup, dark lines on the tops of their teeth, if I was reading it right. And Diane was asking about some tips, and I believe that it was Jen that also jumped in and said that she was curious about this as well, about what kinds of bones would be good to really, really help with that cleaning, you know, a deeper cleaning. Uh, the chicken quarters are great as far as, you know, providing bone content and everything like that. But when you're looking specifically for, the dogs are right here, I don't know, looking at nothing. But when you're specifically really looking to get a deeper clean, I think that you need something with more bone heft to it, if you know what I'm talking about. You know, more, more bone than meat, really. You know, every once in a while, what I would like to do, and this applies specifically to um, I don't know what size dogs Diane has. If you said it in your post, I'm sorry. I forgot to write that down. Yeah, I forgot to write that down. But I know Jen also has a German Shepherd, like I have German Shepherds. And what I like to do every once in a while is to take the actual shoulder bone. And I know everybody's going to freak out and be like, no, it's a weight-bearing bone. Ah! But take the shoulder bone from pork that has been in the freezer. It's already been stripped of a lot of the meat because we cut it out and use that meat for uh, part of the 80%. And this is really great for, you know, summer, early fall months where it's still warm, is to give them those bones, put them out on a leash, O-U-T, I can't say the word because the boy is right here and just let them go to town. And I mean, even just after one session, it's, it's amazing the difference that you can see. No, no, you can't do that. Um, 
So that's what I would recommend for a large dog is something like that. You could also do something like the Rawhide Rolls from rawfeedingmiami.com. Um, they have these, I mean, they're, they're huge, but they're really thick, they're really tough, but they're not going to be breaking bone. And I mean, they will just chew for hours and hours, and I noticed in one session a noticeable difference. So when it comes to bones for cleaning, you want to pick something that is more bone than meat, really. I mean, they're going to be getting some uh, benefit tooth-wise from chewing on things like necks, from chewing on things like chicken quarters, chewing on things like you know, wings, etc. This is all, of course, relevant to the size of your dog. But if you're really looking for a heavy cleaning, you really want to have more bone in there. So chicken quarters are great for getting your bone percentage in there, but they're, they're not quite up to the task of taking care of all of the tooth cleaning. Now, if you have a smaller dog that you're looking to get the same thing in, then you can really get... It's going to be different because it's not going to be something that they're going to be able to necessarily consume all at once if you really want them to go heavy. So if you had something like a chihuahua size, let's say, then you could get something like a chicken back or a duck frame or something that has a lot of bone content that they're really going to have to sit there and work at and get a great cleaning out of that. You really kind of know when your dog is chewing on something that's going to be a real good cleaner when it's something that's not just meat, so it's not just going to go immediately down, but they just keep it on that side and they just keep chewing it and chewing it and chewing it and chewing it. That motion that's going on there with that like one side of their mouth, that's what's making the cleaning happen. So if you find something like that with your dog specifically, then you know that that's going to be a good option for cleaning teeth for your dog. And I know that I just missed a bunch of comments. Uh, let's see, Sharon says that she'd already been feeding krill oil for several months. Uh, so she's, she's giving them the snappies three teaspoons per day. Okay, awesome. Let us know if anything changes, if there's any, you know, if everything stays the same, then that's great. If things improve, that's great. If things get worse, that's not great. But let us hear about it so that we know what's going on with snappies fish oil. Uh, Diane says, I, we wouldn't mind seeing your pups on camera. I mean, this is going to be super weird, but let's see if I can even make this happen. <sighs> you boys. You boys. Yeah. Now they think there's something going on. But there's the boys. Move. Move. Got to get out of the way. Thank you. All right. Well, there was a kind of sort of failed attempt at showing you the boys, but... We tried. Let's get this straightened back out. Alright. So there. I tried, Dan. I apologize, but I tried. I tried. Uh, Casey says, thoughts on a dog's demeanor changing for the better. I'm assuming this means after the transition. Uh, she had bad reactions to anesthesia and vaccines. I have not vaccinated her since. She's a nicer dog now, six months on raw. And she's just over three now. Plan on te teetering her, tittering. I, I've heard it said both ways on the net. Uh, Rodney Habib's video got me thinking. Yeah, the, it's a really, really good option. I don't know a ton about them because I haven't researched into them. But it's from what I have researched, it's definitely a better alternative than just going in and getting another vaccine. You know, again... I'm not a vet. I'm not a vet tech. I'm not providing anybody with medical guidance. It's, I'm just, you know, advice, personal opinion stuff here. I don't like the idea of vaccinating the boys anymore. Uh, they had their vaccinations and all that kind of stuff when we got them when they were young. We got Woken when he was a year old, almost 11 months, and got Horace all of his puppy shots and all those things. And then I started learning even more and more about this stuff. So. I don't plan on doing any more of that unless I absolutely have to and <clears throat> it'd have to be a really good argument to convince me that I had to. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. It's a much better option. If we when it comes time for that, I'll definitely be doing that. The rabies teeter, tighter. 
I'm, I don't know how you pronounce it right. That's how much I've researched into it, but we'll definitely be doing that. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> um, and thoughts on the demeanor changing for the better? It's not unheard of. Um, it's not something that I ever tell anybody about. Like when I'm going through and making the second version of the group course right now, and I'm going over um, <coughs> changes to expect, it's not something that I put as a common change or something to look out for because... Sorry, the sickness makes the throat dry. It's not common enough, I don't think, to warrant a common change reference or notation, but it definitely isn't unheard of. Um, a lot of the crap that is found in a lot of the commercially available dog food, the traditional dog food, causes inflammation and all kinds of other things that can all make dogs uncomfortable. I mean, if you have ever had a toothache, you know how painful they can be. It's that kind of pain that you just, you can't get away from because it's in your face. You know, imagine being the dog that has been on kibble for who knows how long and they're suffering some kind of dental issue from it and they can't tell anybody and they're just in pain and so of course they're going to be irritable because they're in pain or in um, the inflammation example if you have a dog that is prone to or especially a breed that is prone to uh, hip dysplasia or joint issues of some kind elbow dysplasia uh, that inflammation isn't going to be helping. So they may be experiencing some type of early symptom or problem of hip or elbow dysplasia, general joint discomfort, and the inflammation being caused by the crap in the kibble isn't helping that. And I'm not judging anybody that feeds kibble or is half kibble, half raw right now. I'm not judging kibble feeders, and I never will. I'm just saying that it's a reality that some of the stuff that is in commercially available traditional dog foods causes things like inflammation and those things can cause a bad attitude for lack of a better term you know a poor demeanor so when you get them off of that stuff when you get them onto a raw diet a lot if not all of that can go away in a lot of dogs and then all of a sudden you have this dog that was you know suffering this that it had you know, the inflammation, the joint issues, and then all of a sudden it's gone. And so, of course, they're going to be feeling this sense of physical relief, which is going to lead to physical relaxation, mental relaxation, leading to a much more positive, calm, relaxed demeanor. Or, you know, maybe a more energetic demeanor because now they can move without being in pain. So it's definitely not unheard of, Casey. Uh, let's see, Sharon says, I've also got one Greyhound, one Borzoi, and one Afghan. Kylie loves the Borzois and Afghans. Um, Jen said, I had someone tell me about how all of these groups are way too particular and raw feeding doesn't need to be this difficult. They have been raw feeding for many years and seeing everyone... Sorry, there was more, so I had to... They've been feeding raw for many years and seeing everyone being so particular about exact weights and bone content makes them roll their eyes. It made me feel a little more relaxed. We don't need to be perfect and have everything exact. We all need to just relax. Not all of us have hours per week to prep meals with five or more items each. She said that once a dog gets used to offal and their tummies are used to raw, that the guidelines for percentages are just that. Guidelines. That's some really, that's some truth dropping right there. Um, <clears throat> I think that we do way overcomplicate things. And that a lot of people unnecessarily, especially beginners, stress a lot of details <coughs> unnecessarily. Apologies again, guys. I'm trying to not die here while I'm sick and trying to have the Q&A with you. But a lot of us get way too hung up on things, especially beginners needing to, you know, well, I was supposed to feed 2.1 ounces of bone, but there was 2.2 ounces of bone, and they stress out, and they're like, am I going to hurt my dog? Is it too much? And et cetera, et cetera. So, yes, I do agree with that, but I do also agree that in the beginning, if not, if, 
maybe even more so for the human's benefit than the dog's benefit. I think that the guidelines, you know, the 80-10-10, or as I prefer, the 80-10-5-5, just the 10 broken down into the two pieces, uh, it gives people a sense of comfort because it gives them instructions, you know. If you had to put a part on your car and you put the part in your car and everything seems like it's okay, then you're like, okay, I think everything is right, nothing's exploded yet, but if you had step-by-step -step instructions of, okay, okay, I'm supposed to do A, B, C, D, then you have a much better uh, sense of comfort when it comes to the change that you made. You know, this is a really silly example, but I think that it's the same thing for a lot of these new and up-and-coming raw feeders because that's why we see so many of these. <coughs> Does anybody have recipes? Does anybody have exact meal plans? Does anybody have, you know, people want instruction. That's, you know, really one of the main focuses behind the group course. It's not that the information in the group course is revolutionary or that no one has said it before. It's that it gives people a step-by-step -step process of, okay, here's before feeding. Okay, here's day one, week one, week two, week three. So the guidelines are something that people shouldn't be putting their heads through the wall over, especially once they get into it. But in the beginning, I think they're super helpful because they give people that, you know, that safety railing to hold on to that really gives them that that mental comfort of knowing that they're at least really close to doing what is going to be a good, balanced diet for their dog. <coughs> Sorry, guys. <coughs> <coughs> Try not to die. Oh. This is how much I love you. Uh, Jacqueline says, my dogs have a food tolerance to pork and beef. I've mainly been feeding fish, chicken, and turkey. They're okay with beef liver. Is it okay to mainly stick to these proteins? Uh, Jacqueline, this is an excellent question. <clears throat> you know, this is one of the problems in raw feeding, just like um, Jen was talking about with the guidelines. One of these things that you hear a lot is you have to feed... 50% um, red meat, and you have to feed 50% white meat, and if you don't, you're screwing up, and everything's going to go awry, and I just, I have, you guys have heard me do it, especially the longtime members, or semi-not-new members have heard me in these live Q&As rant about variety, and how much I believe in variety, and how many problems it solves, and how it keeps our dogs from getting bored, because we don't want the same thing every day, so why should we expect it of them? And I think that if you are exploring red meat sources that you can use, if you know, you're know you looking at something like elk, if you're looking at something like venison, as long as you're not just trying two red meat proteins, and giving up, and stopping trying, then I think that you're on the right course. I think that continuing to feed fish and chicken and turkey along with beef liver is perfectly acceptable as long as you are continuing to do your best effort, put forward your best effort to keep looking for <coughs> variety for your dog's diet. Jacqueline, I remember that you are fairly new, if I remember correctly, because you know there's 7.2 thousand of you, that you are doing some form of a home-cooked diet beforehand and you transition into this with the help of the group and so where you're at right now is is great if you keep feeding the fish the chicken the turkey the beef liver that's gonna be awesome just make sure that you are still doing what you can putting forth that best effort to keep looking for other red meat protein sources again like <clears throat> like elk like venison, like, you know, like we got the other day from a local hunter that we didn't have to pay anything for, somewhere between 40 and 50 pounds of antelope. Um, just keep looking for those red meat protein sources. And if it turns out that every single thing that you can find, every single thing that you can try is that is red meat, just keeps giving your dog problems, then you've done your best. 
And there's lots of dogs out there that have lots of protein allergies. So you're not alone there. Just don't try to and then give up and stop looking for other red meats. And if you do get to that point where you can't feed anything other than red other than the white meats and all the red meats are just off the table for you, try introducing more white meats. So you're still getting a variety even though you can't step outside the white meat and fish space. <coughs> uh, Kylie says you really should be feeding some sort of red meat. Uh, venison, sheep, goat, uh, rabbit and duck is red too, not positive. Rabbit is white meat. Duck is one of those things that no one seems to want to agree on. <laughs> um, I feed it. I don't think a whole lot about red meat versus white meat in my dog's diets personally. But I don't think about it a lot because, you know, on random looks, it's pretty close to 50-50, the balance that they get between their proteins of white meat versus red meat. And so I don't look at proteins and go, okay, I'm selecting duck right here because I need this amount of red meat. So I don't have a particular position on which one duck meat is, whether it's red, whether it's white. But rabbit is for sure white meat, but the duck, it's, it's all up in the air. And like Kylie said, yes, you really should be feeding some sort of red meat. But again, if you try every red meat that you can possibly get access to, uh, looking at online meat suppliers and it's just not working and the dog's just not reacting well to it, then you've done what you can do and you're still feeding a raw diet, you're still feeding fresh foods, so you're doing the best you can. <clears throat> uh, Danielle Summer says, my two hate eating the liver. Cooking it kills the goodness in it. What else can I do? Uh, Danielle Summers, what I would recommend is there's lots of things that you can do. Um, I'll briefly describe it, but go to my YouTube channel, Dog Dad. It's an orange logo with, you know, whitish yellow uh, writing that says Dog Dad. It's a square. Just go to YouTube, type in Dog Dad, and you'll be able to find in my list of videos, it's one of the more recent ones, um, what to do if your dogs won't eat liver and organs. And I'm making this crazy face in the <clears throat> in the thumbnail, so you'll be able to see it and find it pretty easily. <clears throat> but there are some things that you can do without having to cook or abandon it completely. And it really comes down to you either need to hide it somehow by grinding it into other food or mixing it with other food like eggs and coconut coconut oil, or you need to Really, that's what it is. You need to somehow hide and trick your dog into it. The other thing that you can try is uh, feeding it partially frozen. That seems to work for some people because it dulls down the flavor. So really, your chances are doling down the flavor by doing something like freezing it or hiding the flavor by mixing it with other food, whether that's creating kind of a slushy, like I like to call it, with, uh, you know, putting liver into like a food processor, mixing that with the liver, or putting the liver into a food processor and mixing it with egg and coconut oil, and then feeding that liquid, trying to freeze it, that kind of thing. Or you can take it and you can mix it into other foods if you have a grinder, etc. So really it's about what you have available to you, what's easiest for you to try, but there are options. Again, go to my YouTube channel, Dog Dad, and watch that video. It's about five minutes long and it goes into more detail about how you can do those things. <clears throat> uh, Sharon says, one of my dogs likes the rabbit chunks from Raw Feeding Miami, but would not eat the rabbit with bone in. Any thoughts? Uh, you know, uh, let me see, here are the question, here. Okay, so Sharon's responding, okay. Really quickly then, Sharon's responding to the liver question, saying, we give our dogs frozen liver and kidney. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm dying. Um, and they eat it. When it was at room temperature, they would not touch it. I think it's the texture. Sharon's absolutely right. Some of these dogs are just picky, which is why one of the things that I recommend is feeding it frozen or partially frozen, because it's just weird, right? It's all 
gelatinous and stringy all at the same time. It's just kind of weird. And it just, yeah, I, I don't blame them. So go and check out that video, Danielle, and it'll go into some detail. And it looks like Sharon's having some success with that same thing. Uh, but Sharon again says, one of my dogs likes the rabbit chunks from Raw Feeding Miami, but would not eat the rabbit with bone in. Any thoughts? I bet more, more likely than not, in my personal opinion, he, he's just being picky. That, that, that's it. I don't know if it's a he or a she. I'm just, you know, it just it was a sex that came out. <laughs> but <clears throat> I'm betting that he or she, they are just being picky. I bet that if you give it another few tries, they'll eventually take to it. Sometimes it's just new things are weird and they don't want to accept them because cause they're picky. They're like, no, yeah, the last stuff that you gave me was a whole lot better and I'm not hungry really necessarily, so I'm not touching it. So just keep trying to feed it. Maybe you have to you know, cut it up a little bit, feed smaller portions of bone, but really I think that if you just keep feeding it, that eventually they'll accept it. <clears throat> oh, I'm dying. <clears throat> uh, Jen says, and this is in response to the guidelines discussion from earlier, I agree that instruction is good, but most of us really get stressed out and afraid that we are failing and not good enough it causes people to give up and go back to kibble. I think getting I think getting as close as you can to the guidelines without completely losing our minds is perfectly fine for our babies. Agreed. Yeah, don't th that's the worst thing that you can do. Getting yourself all kinds of worked up and stressed out about it causes exactly what you're saying. It, it makes people say it's just not worth it and they back out and they say screw it and they go back to kibble and and that's just that. So don't stress yourself out over being perfect. What I recommend is trying to get as close as you can and then like I say at the end of all my YouTube videos, try to improve as you go forward. Try to get better every day. Maybe one time a month, one time a week, something. You add something new to the diet, you get a little bit better <clears throat> about weighing or providing this or that. Maybe you get more variety, etc. So, yes, don't put your head through a wall and stress yourself out so much to the point where you quit because then you both lose because there's always going to be a part of you in the back of your mind that's going, I know that I could be doing better, but I just I just quit. And, you know, for, for good reason because you're super stressed out. And your dog loses or your dogs lose because they're not getting a species appropriate diet. So do the best that you can. Don't put your head through the wall and just improve every day. You know, not necessarily every day, but improve as you go forward. Just tr keep trying to get better. None of us are perfect. None of us are ever going to be perfect. They're going to keep finding out more and more stuff about raw feeding as the years go on and more studies happen and get published and we're all going to have to switch things up because something new gets discovered. Uh, Jacqueline says, thank you, Scott. Yes, my husband is beginning to hunt this season, so I hopefully will be getting deer and duck. That's awesome. In larger amount, I will keep looking for more duck and rabbit for them as well. I just had a bad case of cannon butt for a week because of the pork and beef. I will keep looking. Thank you. You are welcome, and yeah, I don't blame you. Cannon butt is, whew, oh, I mean, just for the poor dog having that, you know, digestive upset, but, oh, cannon butt is zero fun to clean up, and your carpet hates it even less. <clears throat> uh, Diane says, guidelines are also good to help people realize that we can't keep simply giving chicken only, ongoing, etc. Yes, uh, the guidelines again there are a really great tool and that's really what it is, is it's not, a tr it's not something that we have to be perfect with and absolutely adhere to, but the guidelines are really, they're really a tool. You know, a screwdriver is meant for one thing and one thing only. 
You know, the guidelines say to do this one thing and this one thing only. But you can use a screwdriver for a whole heck of a lot other than just unscrewing a screw, right? You know, you can use it, and you, if it's a flathead, you can unpry a, a bucket of paint. You know, the guidelines are really just a tool. So if we use them right, then not only do they help us be better raw feeders and provide a better diet, but they can also help us realize that there are other people out there that aren't following the guidelines perfectly and their dogs aren't dead or have horrible diseases or <laughs> the guidelines are tools for us to use, not something that we need to religiously adhere to. <clears throat> Let's see here. Jared says my dog has allergies with alternate best with alternating buffalo, llama, rabbit, duck. I follow food energetic diet. Uh, Diane says thanks. Jen says yes. Thank you, Scott. Hopefully that relaxes some people. I hate people seeing people get so stressed. It's sad. You know, it really, it really, really is. There's nothing more sad to me than what I've seen even in our group a couple of times where people say, you know, literally, <clears throat> they say, screw it. This isn't worth it. I'm so stressed out I can't do this and they leave and they quit. Or they ask a question and they get, you know, you're, this is going to happen. You can't avoid this. People ask a question and they get multiple answers, but they, they don't, they don't look for the truth in it or try and look at what's happening with more people, what more people are doing and trying to find the best answer for their dog. And they just go, screw it. I'm more confused than I was when I asked the question and they give up and they leave. And that's super sad. Again, for the dog, the owner, because <clears throat> they're disappointed in themselves for not seeing it through. So everybody loses. Yeah, Jen, Jen says 20 completely different answers. Yeah, it's true. Actually, in <clears throat> the second version of the course, the group course uh, 2.0, I actually have an entire section on, well, it's a, it's a section, it's a video about the 101, clever, clever, right? The 101 different answers that you're going to get for every question and what you can do to find the best answer for you and your dog. And I think that that's something that's really, <coughs> really important for all of us to realize is that one of the reasons why recipes, one of the reasons why exact meal plans and stuff like that are helpful, just like the guidelines, but they don't work for everybody is because every dog is different. And you need to find, Wilkin, what you doing? Well, hello. Uh, he had some turkey on him, apparently. Um, you need to be finding out what is best for your dog. So I can tell you down to the ounce, even if you have, let's say that you are just like me, and Horace weighs different than Wilkin does, but let's say that you have an 82-pound male German Shepherd, just like Horace, and I tell you exactly what I feed Horace, how often, what it is that I feed, the exact amounts, measurements, how I prepare it, everything. And you can follow it to a T, but that doesn't mean that it's going to work out for your 82-pound German Shepherd in this example. Same thing with any kind of breed, any kind of size dog, it doesn't matter. You need to be able to figure out what works for your dog, which is another reason why the guidelines are so useful, is because they can get us on, you know, a good start, get us off on the right foot, set us off on the right path, and then as we go and we get more comfortable because that first meal is often the worst and the hardest thing for people, once they get past that point, then they can start going, well, I'm doing this thing right now, but somebody said that there's no way that I can do that without things going bad, but things aren't going bad, so maybe things are different from dog to dog, and they get that comfort, so they start exploring, and they start finding out what works for their dog, and that's really the golden rule, <clears throat> is finding out what works for your dog. 
You know, we all need to be feeding meat, right? We all need to be providing the different nutrients, minerals, and everything else that comes with bones, liver, organs, etc. But you need to be able to find the way that it works for your dog, which is one of the reasons why raw feeding groups like ours are so helpful because there's 7.2 something like that thousand people in this group alone. Just this group. And I almost guarantee that none of us are doing it exactly the same. And I think that that's a good thing. For some people that may freak them out because they're like, well then what's the right way? But that is the answer is that there is no right way. It's the way that's going to work for your dogs. Uh, Diane says, <clears throat> that can be the beauty of raw is there are 101 ways to do it right. I love seeing how others do it and tweaking our routine to make it easier. Yes, that is one of the other main benefits of the group, Diane, is being able to see what other people are doing successfully. Being able to see that, well, this thing that this person is doing doesn't necessarily follow the guidelines or this other person said that that's a completely wrong thing to do, but it's working out great for them. So maybe it's going to work out for me too. And then you try that. Just like Diane said, you switch up your routine by seeing what other people are doing successfully. Uh, Michelle says, catfish, good or bad? Catfish is, is good stuff. I've seen lots of people feed it. I've also seen lots of people whose dogs won't eat it just because, you know, it's, it's catfish. It's kind of, it's kind of unique. <laughs> so if your, if your dog will eat it and you've cleaned it properly, if it's a fresh catch, uh, you've frozen it for several weeks, then yeah, go for it and see if your dog likes it. If your dog doesn't like it, then you know, I'll say don't be surprised because there's lots of dogs that don't like it because, again, it's catfish, and catfish is a unique beast. <laughs> so, yeah, catfish as far as itself can be, you know, just fine as far as being able to feed it goes, but don't be surprised if your dog turns their nose up to it because they're just like, mm, not for me. Let's see here. Juliana Garcia asks, what about vitamin supplements? I have been feeding raw for over eight years and have recently started adding oils and glucosamine powder. Thoughts? <coughs> for those of you that are just joining and wondering why I'm being such a weirdo, I'm sick and <clears throat> I'm just trying to do my best to get through the Q&A. So forgive me for the constant water drinks and the coughing, etc. But to Juliana's question, um, I think that Feeding things like oils and glucosamine powder are great. I feed um, our boys fish oil, occasionally coconut oil, and it's great. What I will say is one thing and one thing only, that there are, in my personal opinion, supplements that you add should be addressing a specific need. So, for example... Our boys will not consume, and I have to say consume because I can't say E-A-T in this house without meaning it, but our boys will not consume fish. They just won't. Tried it several times, different types of fish, and the few times that they have actually had it long enough to force themselves to get it down, it just comes, like, it just doesn't agree with them. For one reason or another, it just doesn't agree with them. So we supplement with fish oil. I prefer to feed just whole fish and be able to get all of that stuff that I need from uh, whole foods, but the boys have different ideas in their heads. So I think that supplements are great. There's more and more research coming out about the necessity of supplements, uh, depending on the kinds of meats and stuff that you feed. Uh, if you want to know more about that in detail, uh, check out Thomas Sandberg on YouTube. He's got some great videos. Uh, he's also at longerlivingpets.com. And you can message him directly and ask him questions about supplementation. 
He's an absolute wizard, and he runs the Longer Living Pets uh, Project, which is a 30-year ongoing study. Both the boys are enrolled in it. All you have to do is submit online. But he has lots of great information on supplementation. And we've actually recently started providing a new supplement, um, especially for Horace. Wilkin gets a little bit, like a little teeny bit, but Horace gets a full dose of the stuff, and it's a pH adjust. So I think that it is a great thing to be feeding supplementation, it or feeding supplements. Supplementation is great. <coughs> if you've done your research and you are feeding that supplement for a specific reason. I don't believe in okay, I'm a new feeder, and I got into this group. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm a new feeder, I got into this group, and this person gave me a list of <coughs> 10 supplements that I have to feed because... Because why? <laughs> that, that's the whole point, is if you're going to do a group, and someone says, okay, transition this way, and you have to feed these 10 supplements, or... You have to feed these five supplements, run. Because I just don't believe that. I don't believe that there is a list of supplements that <coughs> everybody has to have. <coughs> it just doesn't work like that. Some dogs have major gut issues. Some dogs have major pancreatic issues. Some dogs have, you know, this issue, that issue, no issues, and... All of these different breeds of dogs don't need the exact same thing. So again, supplementation is great, but do it to solve a specific problem or address a specific need. Don't just feed a supplement because somebody told you that you have to. Uh, Jared says, awesome, I had a lot of supplements. Diane says, love your spelling words. Oh my gosh. Jen says we can't even spell those words in our house. Oh, uh, let's see. Can't say E-A-T. Can't say T-R-E-A-T. Can't say O-U-T. Can't say O-U-T-S-I-D-E. Can't say D-I-N-N-E-R. Can't say K-A-I-T-T-Y. I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some, but yeah. Wait, there's tons of words that we can't say <laughs> unless you mean it. If you say E-A-T, there better be food coming. <clears throat> Parks. Oh, that's another one. P-A-R-K. Uh, swim, not so much. Ride. Mm, sort of. Oh, there's another one. T-R-U-C-K. Can't say that one because that's what we use to go to the P-A-R-K. The list just goes on and on. They're way too smart. I promise I didn't mean to make them this smart on purpose. Actually, I kind of did, but it's backfiring. But I am kind of dying here. <sighs> so I think that I'm going to close this off. It's about 7 o'clock p.m. Mountain Time now. Got started a few minutes late, but I want to stop now before I can't talk anymore to you guys. <coughs> So thank you so much again for joining us. We For the new members, we do this every Friday, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. You know, figure out what that means for your um, time zone. You know, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific Time. And we do it every Friday. Unless something crazy happens or whatever, but almost every single Friday we do this. If you are a new member, remember to check out the pinned post with the group course. Remember to read the group description and the guidelines. It's very, very short and easy to abide by. And just remember that you don't have to be perfect to be an amazing pet owner. You just have to do your best every day. And remember this part, remember this part like I was talking about earlier? Try to improve as you go forward. Peace. See you guys in the group this week.